Billions of dollars are on the line. Reputations are at stake. The eyes of an entire nation are on the city of Indianapolis this weekend. But not for the reason you think, okay? Our guest is one of the best sports broadcasters I have ever come across. Every time I pass through Indy, it was his voice that really rocked the sports airwaves. Now program director at 1070 The Fan, Greg Rakestraw is in the house. Greg, good to talk to you. Thanks for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Always a pleasure, my friend. First of all, let's deal with all the news that's going on. What are the people in Indianapolis, the citizens there, how are they taking all of the, the discussion over what's gone on with regard to the new state law, the NCAA threatening to leave, people saying they're not going to show up? What's been their basic reaction? Embarrassment. Um, and, and it's because we are so used to receiving plaudits and being patted on the back for Hoosier hospitality and our way of hosting major events, especially sporting events, in this town. You know, the Indy 500 has been doing it now for nearly a century but as far as kind of on, on the major scene, the last 25, 30 years, going back to the Pan American Games in the 80s, now you know sixth Final Four in the last 25 years, uh, Super Bowls, uh, you know, et cetera, things like that. And we get rave reviews every time that when you get criticism for something you might not be responsible for, it really stings. Uh, I think some of it has died down a little bit with, with kind of the, the, the quick reaction yesterday, the legislative fix, et cetera. Uh, and so... I think there is even more of an emphasis from all of us locals on, on Hoosier hospitality, and the slogan, Indy welcomes all, has been uh, on display and certainly talked about a great deal these last 48, 72 hours. Do you get a sense that there's going to be a lot of demonstrations come the games themselves, people outside, or any real disruption? I really don't think so. Um, I think had there not been the swift work of both the state, Senate, and House yesterday, uh, and, and the immediate, immediate signing into into law, so to speak, that happened at the end of the day yesterday. Uh, I don't think that makes all the problems go away, but I do think people say, okay, this is a first step. And I think for the most part, the fans that are here just want to worry about their teams and worry about their games. So are you going to see some signs of protest, some demonstrations? Of course. But I think it'll really be minimal in comparison to the thousands that are here to simply go watch basketball games. Indiana is such a basketball state, but of course, for a while, Indiana has not had anybody in the Final Four. <laughs> so <laughs> you're laughing, I think. Well, wait a minute, when was the last time Indiana was in or Indiana was represented Final Four? Butler in 2010 here and in 2011 in Houston. So okay. they are the uh, last team to fly the state flag in the Final Four. Last teams, it doesn't happen very often, but when it's in your backyard, when it's in Indianapolis, how do the fans react? Are they just, they've got to be just a little bit upset that, yeah, we love our basketball, but come on, where's Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers when you really need them? Yeah, the, the fans talk about that, and there is the obvious Kentucky factor of, A, they're invading us, <laughs> uh, and, and then, B, you know, what they have done with their program after some doldrums, how they have made it the preeminent program right now in the country, and there's no other way to describe it coming here at 38-0 and, and having a chance to match Indiana's undefeated season from 39 years ago and become the first team at this level to win 40 games in a single season. Uh, those are some of the things that Kentucky is, is shooting for in their quest for history. So, so there's that factor. Um, the good news is, for most of the area basketball teams, this was a much better year than it was last year. We were not represented in the NCAA tournament for the second time in basically 40 years last year. Last year was about as an abysmal of a year on the court as this state has ever seen at the Division I level. This time it was different. Five teams made the NCAA tournament. Notre Dame made the Elite Eight for the first time since the late 70s. Uh, it seems that, that college basketball is back on the uptick. It's not back to a Final Four level yet, but it clearly took a, a, a big step and, and forward progress was made this past season. So I've got about 90 seconds left then. Are you telling us that people will be wincing just a little bit if indeed Kentucky does, as everybody expects, wins that title? We will gladly take their money for three or four days <laughs> and ask them to politely head back down I-65 on Monday night. That will be the general idea. As yes. quickly and possible as, as they can. So, I mean, what's your take on this? Is Kentucky then going to win these final two games and go undefeated? Yes, I think I think they will. I think that was painful, wasn't it, Greg? That really that was tough for you to get out, wasn't I it? I was trying not to swear. I didn't want to get you in trouble with the <laughs> FCC. Um, what basically I think the best chance for them to get knocked off is the Wisconsin game. I think Wisconsin, of all the teams we've talked about all season long, there was this handful of teams 
that we said had a best chance to beat Kentucky. I think Wisconsin is the best of that bunch. They obviously play them Saturday night. Wisconsin does a lot of the things that Notre Dame did to stay with Kentucky the week before, but they do it with more players and some bigger bodies. I really think if Kentucky gets by Saturday, they're probably going to win on Monday. 30 seconds. How good is this Kentucky team then based on the ones you have seen in recent decades in college? You know, it's, it's hard to compare errors just because players don't stay right. as long. Uh, and so this team, if they pull off this accomplishment of going 40-0, and deserves to be talked about with the great teams of all time. But it's so hard to compare because there are guys that played at Kentucky that are in the NBA now that would still be in Kentucky if this were, at, at Kentucky if this were 20 or 30 years ago. But if this team goes 40-0, and they deserve to be talked about with the greats of all time. I, unfortunate, but the day after, if they do win the title, it's going to be you'll have to go to your guys, your jocks on the air, and go, all right, guys, don't say anything bad about Kentucky now. All right, just let them go. No, it's, no, no. no. Once, once they have paid their bills, it is open season <laughs> on Kentucky. Yet I like that. Greg Rakestraw, the stations again are 107.5 FM, 1070, the fan in Indianapolis. You're a real pro, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. All right, take care. A man challenging President Putin's popularity hasn't been alive for over 60 years. That's next on Midpoint.